Aloy. Back for more, huh? Another round here? Heard you've been busy. As for me, I'm gonna need a few more of these before I get back to the forge. Is there something on your mind? Well, things aren't as bad since you got this place running again. But we still got Olven grading the gears about his concession decree. If you don't put that down, I'll come over there and show you how that game ends. Anyway, right now, I'm just worried about those refugees out from Sunfall. To come all this way, enduring Forge knows what. Shadow Carja refugees? What are they doing in the Daunt? Mm, looking for a new home, I gather. They're camped out by an old trailhead, southwest to here. And therein lies the problem. A stormbird crashed up on the cliffs last week, and Tallinn Clean Brokers had his eye on the salvage ever since. But the refugees have barred entrance. Mustn't interrupt their sun-scorched ritual. Something about finding a twilight path. Huh. I never heard them talk about that before. Yeah, well, these particular Shadow Karja are an odd bunch. But overall, they're peaceful folk. Not that it matters to Tallinn. He'll crack some heads to get to that salvage. Maybe you could swing by, convince him to set up camp somewhere else? Well, from up that way, I'll talk to the refugees. Try to convince them to move. Much appreciated. They have it rough. Don't need Tallinn making it rougher. This Tallinn guy might still be in chain scrape. I could have a word with him first. I'm on the side press. What's that? Um. Hmm. I don't know. How goes it, Hammerhead? How many times it'll blow their damn arm off? I I'm sorry, I'll be right with you. Uh, okay, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's overkill. It's a weapon. Kill is the point. Not if it blows the user's arm off. Oh, just, just, just stop talking. <sighs> Where are we? Ah. <clears throat> so, uh, you, you look like someone who's always searching for a new weapon. Am I right? Actually, I... Ah. Could you just not? I am with a customer. I... I'm not a customer. I got it! Triple the powder. It'll blow a strider sky high. Ba-boom. One shot kill. Guaranteed. Uh... Maybe I am. Then you are in the right place at the right time, Red. How would you like to be the proud owner of the world's first machine-enhanced... Explosive, done-in-one, machine-wrecking... Yet perfectly safe... Javelin Thrower. Are you two from around here? Nah, the claim. Dad sent us out west in search of some unknown opportunity. Said we'll know it when we see it. Sounds like you had other ideas. Let's just say that opening another trading post for my parents isn't how I want to make my mark in this world. <sighs> I imagine traveling alone must be nice. So, she's your partner? My apprentice? And my sister. She's why we're out here. It was an incident. Another incident. Involving explosives? Ba boom! And Dad's precious homebrew. He shipped us out the next day. Huh. <laughs> Tell me more about this weapon of yours. I saw a scroll when I was a kid by some Karja scholar who wandered out west. Had a scary drawing of a Tanakh warrior hunting with a kind of javelin thrower. Effective, yes. Basic, undoubtedly. But coming out here made me remember it, and I am on the brink of vastly improving the tool's archaic design. Whereas I will perfect it. I can use machine parts to enhance the user's throw, increase the projectile's velocity. Well, Boomer here is adamant that enhancing the projectile is better, namely with explosive tips. Boomsticks. Why not both? That could work. There's one small snag. 
I need the parts to meet the first working model. Well, for starters, I'll need charger horns. Intact. Yeah, that. Just be sure to shoot them off before the machine goes down. Otherwise, they break. But the real innovation, keep it yourself, is a fang horn rib. There's a mean one east of here. Blow it sky high. Boomer! You get him for me. It's yours. My treat. You have a deal. Yeah, you! A big a boom! Okay. Now I am... How's the dog treating you? You're too bad. Oh, I did charge it. Where do I go to override the charger? I don't see it on the sort of um, the part of the Go to bell and light. Anyway, um, so I can override one of these chargers. Probably continue the main quest for now. Machines. Oh, spotted. I could have gone knock up on that one. Uh oh. Gonna come and attack me. Go take it out. Don't seem to be following me, so. I can't seem to save her.
Okay, we'll put the MC. Oh! Oh no. Um, the embassy. Well, I could sneak. Well, I could sneak past these, so. Why? Or, you know, avoid them, or. Always gonna have extra. I could try and take them out. Try and avoid them for now. What's this? Wait. No. Ah. Okay. Okay. So many points, so many, uh, got two indicators here, not quite sure. Quiet breaths now. Think it might be safe to go, is it safe to go down here? Sundom before the forbidden west. And Karja Horn. Maybe that means the embassy starting soon. Alright, I should find whoever's in charge here. First, um, I resupply at my stash. Might be worth taking a look around, too. Is that the savior of Meridian? Can we have a word? Ah, Savior, <laughs> tell me, are you seeking passage into no man's land by any chance? Maybe. Why do you ask? Ah, well, to hammer it plain, there's treasure out west. Unclaimed scrap and ancient metal. And I've got a sturdy band of salvagers that knows the lay of the land. You're not afraid of the Tanakh? <laughs> Terrified, but I carry out most of my business in no man's land a neutral territory and all that Baron light is our port of entry when its doors aren't closed for an embassy I was hoping your arrival meant they might be opening soon. I've got a business to run after all I want that embassy to happen as much as you do believe me. I'm working on it <laughs> Good to know and uh, Keep us in mind. If you do manage to open the way, our main camp will be just past Baron Light. We'll buy any scrap you've got on you. And if you're looking for machine parts, we've got the best in the West. Guaranteed. All right. Maybe later then. Uh, if you could get those blasted gates open. <laughs> I guess I'm not the only one who wants to get those gates open. Okay. Um. Well, let's maybe have a look around. Trade with Hunter. I like your style, machine hunter. Browse my weapons. Um. Mm. How goes it, Hammerhead? 
Don't see many more out in these parts. There's errand. And one else that talks. Looks like he's had a few. You're in a sour mood. That broken ribs will do that to you. Right. <laughs> Gentlemen. That's our cue. You taking the edge off? Oh. Well, I mean, I'd ask you to join, but who'd be left to save the world, right? <clears throat> right, now let me guess. You're in a rush, right? So, uh, whatever you need. Ask away. How have things been? Since I... Your silent departure? <laughs> yeah, not bad. Vanguard's going strong. Helped Avad pick up the pieces after the battle with the Eclipse. And I took a month to bury Ursa in the claim. But when I got back, I got the assignment to babysit Wadis on his way to the embassy. I thought that'd be a cakewalk, so of course things went sideways. You got blindsided. Wasn't your fault. <laughs> a couple more of these, maybe I'll believe you. I was, um, wondering if you were able to lay Ursa to rest, like you wanted. Uh, yeah, 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 we did. Uh, just seen the crowd that showed up to pay their respects. Half of them owed her a favor, and the other half, the other half owed her their lives. In the end, everybody drank. You know, that is the rowdiest funeral since, uh, well, since ever. <laughs> Feels like she would have liked that. Yeah, damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> she would have put them all under the table. What do you know about the embassy? I know, not much. Only that Avad really wants it to happen. He said I'm making peace with these Tanakh. But from what I hear, they're not too big on the whole diplomacy thing. They do most of their talking with blades and arrows. So if you're heading their way, be prepared. Things might get ugly real fast. I'll keep that in mind. What do you know about this place? No, nothing good. It's where the Karja dragged all the captives they took from the Forbidden West during the Red Raids. Lucky ones became slave labor. The rest were hauled off to the Sun Ring and Meridian. For sacrifice. You got it. Tanakh made sure to wreck the place before they chased the Karja out of the West. I can't say I blame them. And now Avad's paying the Azram to rebuild it. No matter how much new stone they put up, it'll still be stained in blood. I, um, I better get going. Oh, uh, yeah, don't let me stop you. Just, are, are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm saving the world. That's, that sounds like a lot for just one... Errand. Yeah, all right. Can't blame me for trying. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is, if you ever do need me. I know where to find you. Hopefully sober next time. Yeah, don't count on it. Be careful out there, Aloy. Savior, you're my last hope. Conover, she's Meridian Savior, not yours. It's just Aloy. What do you want? Please, no one will listen. But the Eclipse, they're here in the Daunt. Really, Conover? Aloy's the one that defeated them. You're bothering her with this hogwash now? 
Some of them must have fled west after the battle at the Alight. I saw one of our sentries, Lorovic, sneaking off to meet with one. I tried to eavesdrop, but they spotted me. And then Lorovic tried to kill me. I... fought back. It was him or me. Unfortunately, there's no hard evidence that connects Lorovic to the Eclipse. And since Conover doesn't deny killing his fellow soldier, Nozar sentenced him to death. What makes you so sure Lorovic was working with the Eclipse? Well, I was too far to hear everything. But I heard them both say the word Eclipse. It's not the most outlandish claim I've heard, but it's up there. Crying Eclipse is a convenient way to dodge a death sentence. If I have to die, so be it. But if we ignore this threat, others are going to die too. Tell me exactly what happened. Weeks ago, during a shift change, some trespassers slipped through the gate. By the time anyone noticed, they were halfway out the canyon. Nozar didn't see the need to give chase. Let the Tanakh take care of them, he said. Nozar's not one to be sidetracked. He tightened up the patrol schedules, reprimanded the sentries, and everyone moved on. But I couldn't stop thinking about it. None of us are careless out here, meaning someone left it open on purpose. And Larovic, well, he's always grumbling about officers. But on this, he was too quiet. And after the incident, he started acting different, jumpy. So when I spotted him sneaking out of the barracks after hours, I followed. I found him arguing with a stranger. And when Larovic mentioned the eclipse, I, I tried getting closer, but they heard me. The stranger took off, and Lorovic lunged at me with his knife. Instincts took over. Sentries heard the scuffle and found me standing over his body. Why don't you believe him? We combed the woods. Searched Lorovic's bunk, searched it again. Didn't find anything. Look. Conover's a good man. I don't believe he murdered Larovic in cold blood. But Nazar only listens to facts. And that fact is, Conover killed his fellow sentry. He doesn't deny it, right? No, but more eclipses are out there. And considering there's no evidence backing up this eclipse story, well, we can't question a dead man. Nazar's on edge with the upcoming embassy and doesn't want distractions. But hey. If you find a bunch of Eclipse soldiers hatching an evil plot in the woods, please do let us know. The meeting you witnessed. Did you hear anything else about their plans? No. But the clearing where they met is just east of here, across the river. A dozen soldiers have already searched at Conover. There's nothing there. I can see things others can't. If the Eclipse are in the Daunt, I'll find them. Thank you, Aloy. Sun bless your search. Don't get your hopes up, soldier. Ignoring me again. No one is allowed past this point. Commander knows our orders. Lighten up, Paiv. You've got a thick wall of stone between you and the Tanakh out there. Yes, sir. Why the long face, Mavas? Wish you were heading out there. Damn, uh, no, sir. I'm on mute the whole time. Damn Are you it. in charge around here? Ah, apologies. No, that would be Commander Nozar. I'm Lawan, the second in command. So, what brings Aloy of the Nora to Baron Light? 
I'm here for the embassy. I need it to happen so I can head west. And maybe now that Studio Suarez is here, we can finally get things underway. <laughs> yes, the Sun Priest. Walked in practically kicking and screaming behind his escort. Really seems to like his scrolls. But the embassy remains delayed. Commander Nozar has signaled our readiness, but the Tanakh Marshals have yet to sound their horn. <sighs> All right, fine. Let me through the gates then. I have my own business with them. I'm sure you do. But I'm afraid I can't. Commander's orders. Normally, the gates are open for any who dare to venture out. Asaram salvagers, a few especially brazen Karja, but no one's allowed in or out before an embassy. Now we're open. Once the Tanakh have left. So what happens at these embassies, exactly? Mostly trade and negotiation. The Karja offer tribute of food, spices, and gear. In exchange, the Tanakh return personal effects taken from Karja soldiers that fell during the Red Raids. This particular embassy, however, is a special case. Because the Tanakh are handing over some sort of prisoner, right? A soldier named Fashav? Ah, so you've heard. The exchange has got everyone on edge. You never know if an embassy's going to go well until it's practically over. You said something about Tanakh marshals. Who are they? They're the tribe's elite warriors. Before every embassy, they arrive with a contingent of soldiers from each of their three clans. Then, during the proceedings, they negotiate on behalf of their leader. And by negotiate, I mean stare down our sun priest until they concede. Paiv over here came face to face with them for the first time at the last embassy. <laughs> came back drenched in his own sweat. It was hot that day, sir. <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> Where is this Commander Nozar, then? If he's the one keeping the gates shut, I'll convince him to open them for me. I'll take you to him, but I have to warn you. The commander isn't one to break protocol, especially when he's already high strung. We'll see about that. This way. There's a lot of activity going on around here. The Tanakh tore down this place during the Red Raids. Two years oh, of labor, hi. and we still have a long way to go. The work stoppage and chain scrape nearly halted our rebuilding efforts. But I hear a certain Nora got them back to work. I was just helping out. Yes, well, I'm sure Alvin was thrilled. Okay. Follow Lawen to the embassy. Side soldier, sir. There's the commander. Better brace yourself and good luck. Why the sun king believes we can have peace with these barbarians beyond me? How are we to hold an embassy with a tribe that can't even govern their own people? What more can you expect from barbarians? <clears throat> oh. Aloy, was it? Yes. The one who cleared the valley for you? That Aloy. <laughs> we appreciate your service. At least we are ready for the embassy to begin. Didn't you just give the signal? Both sides must signal readiness. Until the Tanakh sound their horn, we wait. Yea, for as the first shall be Shut up. Why the delay? The Tanakh are a tribe composed of three clans. How many banners do you see? You're just gonna wait? Go find out what's wrong. <sighs> oh, this isn't some forgotten corner of the East where you come from, Nora. It's the Forbidden West. If you don't like it, run back to Meridian. Follow complaint. The Meridian I saved, you mean? That's right. Nobody walks to the gate until the third clan arrives and the Tanakh horn has sounded. Not even the savior of Meridian. Mm. 
No, I... I'll wait. Oh, I'm going now. And if I say... If I say I'll wait... If I say I'll wait, can I just come back and say... Yeah, I'm going now. Uh, I'll just Lucky say... For you. The savior of Meridian still has a few things she wants to take care of. Would be worth another look.